I'm Rahul Gosain, here with my brother and co-host Rohit Gosain. In today's discussion with Dr. Rashna Shroff from University of Arizona Cancer Center, we had a chance to focus on first-line treatment options in unresectable hepatocellular carcinoma, particularly our available options for IO and IO combinations, keeping patients' medical comorbidities and their underlying liver function status is so critical. In first line, we have options of tyrosine kinase inhibitors or a tezobab based off I am Brave 150 or durvalumab with tremilimumab based off Himalaya or Stride study. Each available option comes with its fair share of unique side effects and recognizing this is equally important. It's such an exciting and different landscape for treating hepatocellular carcinoma or liver cancer. Uh, you know, we've really moved into the immunotherapy space, as you as you suggested, and that really was first brought about with the Embrave 150 data. So this was the study that looked at atezolizumab and bevacizumab, a monoclonal antibody against VEGF, that's bevacizumab, with a checkpoint inhibitor, and that is the atezolizumab. And that was compared to what was our standard of care at the time, which is serafinib. And, you know, this study initially came out in 2020, but then there was subsequent uh, additional longer-term follow-up and data that was then published. So just all the key efficacy endpoints with longer-term follow-up that was proof of principle that in patients with preserved liver function, so all of these studies are child PUA cirrhosis patients, meaning early stage cirrhosis, um, that there is an immunotherapy option with atezolizumab and bevacizumab. And so the second option that really came about was based on the Himalaya study. So the Himalaya study was a large global study as well that looked at a combination dual immunotherapy approach. And that was what's historically called the stride regimen, but basically is one dose of tremolimumab, which is an anti-CTLA-4, with dervalimab. But the study was really looking at overall survival of the stride regimen versus serafinib. And so when the Himalaya data, Himalaya data first came out, it was a positive study. But what was really exciting at ESMO just this year, a couple months ago, uh, we saw the updated five-year overall survival. And again, importantly, with longer-term follow-up, we are seeing continued statistically significantly improved survival with the Durva Tremi versus Serafinib. And I just want to remind everyone that the stride regimen is just a single dose of the anti-CTLA-4. But as we typically look for in immunotherapy, what was really impressive about this was that separation of the curves. And so when you look at that Kaplan-Meier with the longer-term five-year OS data, the landmark 60-month overall survival um, with the stride regimen, 19.6% at the 60-month mark versus 9.4%. So one in five patients still alive. Uh, at the five-year mark with advanced hepatocellular carcinoma, which is just incredible. How do you decide one over the other? At the end of the day, there are some small nuances in terms of eligibility between I'm Brave versus Himalaya, for instance, in terms of patients who were included with, with VP4, basically portal vein uh, involvement, which was... Um, you know, tends to be a poor prognosis, if you will, if there's kind of main portal, brand, portal vein branch involvement. Um, but the honest truth is, is in clinical practice, I, I think it really just kind of comes down to potential side effects and or um, kind of the nuances of how often patients want to come and, and things like that. Um, I think there's a lot of people who really appreciate the one-time dose of the Tremi and then, you know, coming back every four weeks, which is you know, unfortunately, with a lot of our hepatocellular carcinoma patients, there's a lot of other psychosocial components that go into their management. And so transportation issues, avail availability and time off work, I mean, these are real world problems that we deal with. And so I think some of those things are really the ones that play in. There's what we we saw in the trials, and then there's the like actually clinically relevant and, and kind of issues that we deal with. So, you know, I think that's the beauty of the immunotherapy uh, changes that we've seen with the landscape, because not only are they great in terms of efficacy, but they're overall pretty well tolerated. Rachna, just before we close, any final thoughts or key takeaways for our listeners treating unresectable HCC? It's just such a great time to be involved and, and to watch this landscape change so rapidly and, and for so in, in, in such an impactful way. So, I mean, it's just, there's so much more coming. Thank you for joining us. Make sure to check out our other discussions in this series over the next few months.